Tracker UI is a CSS framework for React-based apps. It is super easy to use, which makes for a smooth developer experience. I've been using Chalker UI for over a year now, and in this time, I have learned a lot about it. In this video, I'll show you five Chalker UI features that will take you from beginner to advanced. When you override the default theme, most developers create one theme file, usually named theme.js. When your project gets larger and you have multiple components and multiple overrides, this file will get long and hard to read. To fix this, we can use multiple theme files. It will look something like this. We can create a folder named theme. Inside of here, create a file named index.js. This will be the main entry point for our theme. It is where we will use the extend theme hook and pass in the overrides. You'll notice we are importing a few other files. Styles.js will be all of our custom style overrides. For example, colors, fonts, etc. The foundations folder will hold our foundational style overrides and the components folder will hold all of our component style overrides. By splitting it up like this, we can create a project that is scalable friendly. Normally to create responsive values in Chalker UI, you'd do something like this. However, some properties like variant and size don't accept this array-based or object-based syntax. For these properties, we need to use the use breakpoint value hook. By using this, we can achieve the same effect as the array object syntax. Media Query is an advanced CSS feature, but Chalker UI makes it easy to use. You might be thinking, why do we need this if we already have custom breakpoints? Well, you might want to add a breakpoint that is not defined in our custom breakpoints to only one element. To use this, simply use the use media query hook and pass in your value. Then use the variable in the code. There is a property called config, which is passed into the extend theme hook. This property takes in three global theme config properties that most people do not usually set up. The first one is initial color mode. This accepts two values, light and dark. This is simply the initial color mode of your application. Next is use system color mode. This also takes in two values, true or false. If this is true, when the user first gets to your app, it will use the system's color mode. For example, if it is nighttime and you are in night mode, it will be dark theme. By using these two properties together, you can achieve whatever color mode effect you want to. The third property is CSS var prefix. This accepts a string value, and this string that you pass in will be appended to the CSS variables used in your application. The default is dash dash chakra. However, you can replace this with whatever you want. So for example, if you want to add a more project specific name, you can do that here. Now this does not change any of the functionality of the code, but it is nice to have. Right out of the box, Chalker UI provides us with some nice looking colors. If you dive deeper into the colors, you'll notice that each color has a value from 50 to 900. This is so it works well with the color scheme property and the color mode. You can create your own custom color palette such as a brand color palette by naming it and then passing in hex values for each of the values. You'll want to make 50 your lightest color and work your way darker for best results. I hope you were able to get something out of today's video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this.